Hey guys, it's Ellen here. Welcome to my channel. We're painting another super easy winter landscape. These are like the snowy winter branches. Um, it's a wet on wet technique and a little splattering and I go over everything step by step, but this is super easy. And look how cool it comes out, right? So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna go over supplies. I have a piece of Arches 100% cotton cold pressed paper. This is a six by nine inch piece, taped to just a piece of cardboard, uh, you know, some cheap cardboard you have. This is actually the back of like a pad that I had used. Paper towels, water, paint brushes, I go over them as I use them and I always put everything in the description box along with my paints and everything else. Um, I actually decided to, you know, I don't always do this, but sometimes I do this, I do like a little, uh, test run to see how it's gonna come out and this is a test run pretty simple and fun uh, of a snowy winter landscape and so we're gonna duplicate that because um, I like actually liked it a lot and I'm gonna go over and use show you how I use my blues whatever to paint the wet on wet in the beginning but if you don't want it in blue tones you could make it in other color tones I mean you could make it in greens blues even grays and bright beiges you know Play around with it. So let's get started. I'm just gonna take a simple craft flat brush. I'm gonna get my paper wet. Got some water here. I'm just gonna get the whole piece of paper wet. Just like that. Get it all wet. And we're just gonna start putting down some nice paint. And I'm gonna be using uh, Prussian blue. My Prussian blue here. I'll mix it with some, I actually have some black um, gouache I like to mix it with, maybe even a little Van Dyke brown. I'm just gonna get this bluish, brownish color. And I'll take my Princeton 12 Neptune brush. It's just a big, fat, fluffy kind of brush, whatever you have will work. And just go across, I'm adding in some more color. You can hold it up like this and it can bleed down. And you can just keep adding color. Like I said, I'm going to keep adding some more of this color that I'm mixing up a little bit darker. You can put some more gray tones in there, get some gray in there, with that, just adding more bl black or gray to my blue. I do want it darker up top and then lighter on the bottom, so it can bleed down into that light tone. Or you can clean up your brush, just grab some water and kind of just push it down like this. See how it's just doing a nice gradient? And then, like I said, keep adding some darker tones up here. I want it a little darker up here, but I don't want it just like one line going across. I'm gonna kind of take my paint, so I'm mixing up some more dark, kind of on an angle, just like that. La la la. Have fun with this, you know? Put some Van Dyke brown in here. I like the brown mix of the blue, it's kind of pretty. It's a nice little color to it. While it's puddling down below, you grab your paper towel, whatever towel you're using. Some people use um, old t-shirts and stuff. I just kind of wipe up that puddle on the other side. It's gonna keep going downward. See how the veins keep going downward. I just keep adding Maybe a little green on this one. But I definitely want like a light bluish gray on this side like I did with the first one I did. And if it's looking too dark, you can take your paper towel again and swipe up some of the color. Just keep playing around with it. And if you want it even darker up here, you do want to keep it wet down here though because we're going to use some gouache while it's wet. I'm going to put a little more dark tones. Clean up my brush. I'm going to get some water in here. Just swoop up some of this color and let it bleed down still. Like I said, don't get caught up in like what the blues look like. And again, I'll take this puddle of the paint. Lift that up. And I want a little bit darker gray over in here. I 
that works. It's a little bit different than the other blue that I had, but that's fine. You could play around with the colors all day long. So while that's still damp and wet, I have I just placed down some white gouache. This is kind of similar to the other tutorials I did the winter, the easy winter ones. I'm going to get it really loose, almost like translucent. When you get that gouache all loose with water, it becomes more translucent. And we're going to have some fun splattering again. And I remember I say all the time, the bigger the brush, the bigger the splatter, the smaller the brush, the smaller the splatter. So I'm going to work with a little bit bigger brush. We're going to work with that Princeton Neptune brush. And make sure I clean it off really good. That's why I have like three water jars. Get all that paint off. And I'll use another brush to help tap it with it. So I've got a lot of paint in here while it's still wet. I'm tapping it. It can make some bigger splotches because it's a big fatter brush and some small ones I'm getting small ones here I want some bigger ones I think the paint needs to be a little bit looser not so loose it's just like a big puddle but pretty loose there we go let it snow let it snow let it snow I know I can't sing so I'm sorry I'm just going to put a bunch of these splatters in here. Voila. And we're going to let them spread out. And they'll do their thing. They do their, like this. Let's see this one right here. It's a nice spider spread. Well, it's wet and damp. So you kind of want to like let it kind of naturally dry. If you kind of want to speed up the process with a hair dryer, you might want to wait a few minutes so the color doesn't move around. But the whole point is that this loose paint, see how it's slowly spreading. And if you put a dryer on it right away, it's not going to keep continuing doing that. So that's what we want to do. We want to just let it dry a little bit naturally. And then we'll come back and we'll paint in the branches. And then the snow on the branches. And then we're going to paint these really big kind of bubbly snowflakes that make it look like snow. And it's kind of like a translucent wet on wet. So that, you know how I do some translucent watercolor. When you put the other color on top of the other one, it gets a little darker. Same thing. Same premise. So now you see how these are other these little ones are really spreading out because it's on the wet paper. We're not, we want to continue that process. We don't want to stop it. If you blow dry it, you're going to stop it pretty quickly. So I'm going to let this dry completely and then come back. Okay, once it's dry, everything seems to lighten up, like the, the blues and the actual white splotches, which is what we want. We want this like really light kind of almost like a light blue it turns into when the white is splotted into the wet color so now we're going to start painting our trees um, I might use a Princeton 8 long round and then I might switch to a 4 and I'm just going to take my Van Dyke brown here pretty simple I might mix a little black with that or pans gray in some areas we're just going to paint these tree branches really simple a little gray to that. So I'm just going to go from here, just on the left hand side. I'm just going to go up with my brush. And then I kind of have mine swaying this way. So up and over like that. I'm just going to keep painting these branches. And get them skinnier and tinier as they go outward. Just like that. Little tiny. Wiggle them, move them around like that. Get another branch up in here. Like I said, as they get outer from that branch, they're going to get smaller and lighter. And we're going to add some darker tones to it too. So don't be afraid to add some deep dark blackish brown colors to some of them. We're going to end up sticking snow on them. So I'm just making these branches go outward like this. And so that's, so you're basically making a fat trunk going up with the skinny branch, just using your brush. You're not doing anything special. And then I have another tree over here. Same thing, going upward and outward. The branches will crisscross. that tree 
in this tree. I'm just doing two. You could do more trees if you want, but I just kind of want to keep two trees on the side. And adding some darker browns. Like I said, as you get out here, you can add a touch, touch. We want it really lighter as we're getting out to the edge here. So it can be a little dark brown in some areas. You just see the tip in the tip, and then we're just wiggling those branches, and getting little teeny branches off the branches. This is very therapeutic. I can sit here and paint little twigs all day long. But see how I'm kind of in the, kind of this direction, the swooping side direction. And I'm going down like this. I'm just going to keep painting these little teeny skinny branches. Don't want to overdo it. And over here, they'll be a little bit darker and thicker. So I'm going to go into some darker tones. You can add a few darker tones out here. Like I said, not too much. You want to keep it lighter towards the ends. And you know, just using the watercolor naturally to dry lighter. But you can go back over some of them and add the dark, dark tone. Almost like a black, blackish brown to some of these. This is just so much fun. I don't know why I like tree branches so much. There's something very therapeutic about painting these. And this whole tutorial is super easy. I mean, you're just putting some color down, you're splatting some paint, you're just taking the brush and the tip. You know, the trick is don't hold the brush down so hard. Hold like a pen, but like up in the air a little bit. And you get these little wiggly, skinny branches. Just kind of play around with that. And of course the tones of the trunk got a little darker. But just painting these branches is like almost doodling. But with a paintbrush. This is why I like the Princeton 8 Long Brown brush because you have a nice belly here and a great tip. The long rounds are kind of like that. And I don't even need to grab the four. I can just use a teeny, just touch it very lightly with my tip of the brush on the ends here. The four is very tiny. This one right here. You could use the four for the whole thing if you wanted to. But if you wanted bigger branches, I would suggest using the number eight. And you know, you see a lot of my videos with this brush. I love the Princeton series. Um, it's kind of one of my favorite ones. So you're getting all these branches in here. Having fun. Putting the branches. Like I said, I'm getting a little bit darker down here. Not too dark, just a little bit darker. And add a few more branches. Because why not? <laughs> and up in here. You can see, we, you don't want to watch me paint branches all day long, do you? I mean, all right, I'm going to stop myself because I could just do this for hours and hours. Okay, so once you finish all your little branches, you feel good about what you painted, you can always add some little more, but we're, we're not going to do that anymore. And, and just loving it like this is pretty enough. Well, now we're going to take the gouache again. We're not done with you, gouache. So going to start putting some snow on the branches. So you don't want this super wet like the last round. A little less water. And we're just going to take our brush and start putting in some snow on all, even the little tiny branches. It has a great effect. And see how I don't just hit every part of the branch. Just kind of tapping little areas just on top of that branch even in the corners and the crevices. And like I said, just doing this alone is really pretty. You can spend hours just painting snow on top of branches. 
another very therapeutic thing to do and very simply you should have a gua white gouache in your arsenal of paints with watercolor I tend to use it a lot and I use the water-based gouache I don't use the acrylic gouache I don't care for it because you can't um, activate it like watercolor it's just like acrylic and I don't know why people would want really maybe because it's like a thinner kind of acrylic type of paint so it kind of works like gouache but it's not the same in my opinion with the water-based gouache so I'm just going in all these little branches you can make some snow a little thicker a little thinner a little variety put it in those little crevices snow falls in everywhere you go through all your little branches. <laughs> That's what you do. You're going to go hit all the little branches. This is very fun. Also, guys, leave in the description box um, some like things that you would like to see for January. Um, now that the Christmas season is going to be basically over, do we want more landscapes? Do we want winter scenes? Do we want flowers? Do we want animals? You know, we, I like to see what people are interested in. Sometimes I get requests for like the most specific thing. Can you paint a doll with a dress? That, 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 I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to paint something that the majority of people are looking for. You know, I'm not going to paint a tutorial specific to your needs. It just doesn't work for the majority of the people that come to my channel. Sorry. Or even my Patreon. So keep them, keep in, don't give me a specific thing like paint a, paint a doll in a blue dress in a window. Give me something like um, landscapes, seascapes, abstract, that kind of thing. Flowers. And then that, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so enough me chit-chatting with the snow on the tree. So now we're going to start painting in our little circles. I wouldn't call them little. See, I did this, all these kind of circles everywhere. You want the kind of overlapping. So then we're going to get the gouache nice and loose again. Translucent. Here is where your white watercolor can come into effect. They do sell white watercolor. It's kind of wild, but they do. So it's more translucent than probably gouache, but you can just get the gouache all watered down. So it's pretty watered down. I'm just gonna start painting circles with our gouache. Big ones, little ones, like all over the branches. Some big ones back here, like right here on these branches. I'm gonna go sporadically, stick them all over the place. This is where you kind of want to make an actual circle. I know sometimes, like, oh, don't bother with it, but you want it to really kind of look like a circle. And see the less paint. The more translucent, I mean, the less water, the more translucent it'll be. You can barely even see this, some of these circles, but that's how we want it. We want it pretty translucent. Just gonna go in there, paint a bunch of these circles. Down the bottom, don't paint too many um, circles, as you see in my, the one I didn't. Um, you know the practice one. I didn't paint barely big ones down here. Just kind of all up here So you're just gonna go in even on top of all these branches and paint these loose circles Varying in size put some really big ones medium size some tiny ones and various in um, Water in the gouache like so it's so it's loose and then it's not so these ones are really loose. You can barely see the, the circle. 
and then some you get more paint on, I mean, less water on the gouache. And then you go right on top of that one. And you can see it more. So you want to put a variety of both. See, I'm going through. I'll put some big ones overlapping up here. Going on the tree. We're just going to be going around doing this. Now I also played around with, I have this like white silvery paint and I did the same thing with that. That's a watercolor metallic paint. It's just fun to add different elements. Um, you can't really see it too well, but they're in here. They're like little shimmery ones. And I just think it adds like a little something special. See down here, I'm adding like more concentrated paint. Just like this in circles. Not as big as the ones up here, but you can actually go in the middle of the little splatter dots that we made. It gives it a glowing effect. Just a little dot right in those little splatters that we did. With the really concentrated gouache. And even in the circles. If they're not too big, otherwise it looks kind of goofy. Just keep putting the circles in. Now see they dried, it's kind of translucent. I'm going to go back over one or two of them. Just like that, right on top of it. I just can paint circles every day. And we're going to splatter again because we're all about the splatter. It's not all about the base, it's all about the splatter. So I'm getting some more concentrated gouache circles down here. I liked having the sm like more, much bigger ones up here and then smaller ones down below. Just kind of keep playing around with adding the circles until you see, like I said, in various sizes up in this section. You can overlap a few of them together. Some big ones down here, and when they dry, you overlap them like this one. It can be overlapped. Get a little bit thicker paint. This is very like therapeutic, I think. There is so much craziness in this world. So much media making everyone freak out. Yes, you can be safe and not have to listen to that I mean it's constant no wonder why people have fatigue I want my people to be safe but not live in fear okay see I keep doing this I'm adding circles upon circles upon circles see how they overlap it gets a little darker where it overlaps over in here that's where the money comes in. Multiple overlaps. Kind of like that, um, like a filter in the camera. I mean, it makes those snowflakes kind of, or snow, do that. Okay, so we're gonna keep doing that here and there, but I'm gonna go in and start splatting again, because <laughs> I can't. I'm going to use this brush actually because I can make smaller splatters. Like I mentioned, the bigger the brush, the bigger splatter. And again, I'll just hit it upon another brush. I want little teeny ones next to the little branches right here. We'll concentrate little tiny splatters. It's just sweet, pretty. Just this really small splatters 
concentrated right where the branches are. And you can keep going in one section, so it just kind of looks like it's fading out. See, I'm just splattering a lot in this one little section here. Has a nice effect to it. And then just kind of diversing it out this way. A few down below. Not too much. But I really just kind of want it on the ends of the, the branches. So it's kind of like you can't really see the branch. If that makes any sense. Just having fun. See, you can barely see that branch now. That was the whole point. It's a little messy. So it's like the splatter kind of like flowing that way. This is so much fun. How could you not like to do this? <laughs> and then, like I said, go back in and get more concentrated um, of the gouache and put some nice, you know, small circles all over, even up in here. Really bright white circles. Still fill in some of these with the bright big circle. You could do that. Has a nice look to it. Some real big ones and some small ones. They're very white. So the less water, the more concentrated this paint will be for you. Um, I haven't done it with acrylic paint, but I suppose you could probably do the same thing. See, so I'm putting the really concentrated white circles all around up in here. Some bigger ones. And it's a good thing to step back and look. I'm like sit standing up now, looking down and seeing what I like. And I think I need a few really big ones. Like one over here. That's a really big one. what I'm talking about. Step away. You know, that's how you see your paintings. Um, another good tip is step away and, or just, if you don't want to step away, take a photograph of your painting. The camera's great. You take a photograph and you say, oh, I like this in this area. I want to change this in this area. That's a tool I use a lot when I'm doing my acrylic paintings. I look through the camera lens. It's a fantastic tool. So see I'm going back over here and putting these big circles in. Just like that. And I think we've created a snowy, snowy scene. Isn't this fun? This is so easy. Come on guys, so easy. And just like really pretty actually. It's kind of like a nice abstract. I guess I'm going back in with the snow here. Nice little fun thing to do when you're bored and you can't think of anything to do. Make a bunch of snowy trees. You could probably do this with a um, pine tree, whatever. I just like the branch type tree. All right. And then we're going to reveal, actually I think I'm over here, I'm gonna add just one more circle. Feels a little weird and lonely. It's a lonely circle. Get a little more concentrated in the paint. Yes, that feels better to me. And up top. See, I'm stepping back and looking. Yes. Okay, we've got our snowy scene. Let's reveal the pièce de résistance. <laughs> Excuse me, I can't even look at this tape. This is the best feeling ever when you look at the tape when you're doing wet on wet and you see the nice white edge and you see how pretty it looks. 
Oh, I got a boo-boo there. That's okay. I can just take some white paint. Wasn't this fun? It looks so cool, doesn't it? So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials are up. And also, uh, if you're not a Patreon member, go over there and check it out. I have uh, exclusive tutorials weekly um, on Thursdays. I put them in like Thursday afternoons, and they come with traceable. Some do, some don't. Um, but it's just they're not. These tutorials are not included on uh, YouTube. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And like I said, leave them ideas that you would like. You know, like I said, basic <laughs> landscapes, animals, florals that you would think you'd like to see going forward in 2021. So thanks guys so much for coming to my channel. I appreciate you so much. I hope you have a fantastic day and a holiday week and I'll speak to you soon.